Thank you all for tuning in. Sunday, March 18th, 2018. This is Sneed from Sneed Mobile Tech. I do have some news to uh, put you guys on today. It's mostly going to be a focus on Sprint and a little bit about T-Mobile and some of the other carriers, uh, but it is mostly about Sprint. The first half of this video uh, will cover a lot of what Sprint is going to be doing in the next year or two, so I'll just jump right in with it. Uh, from a market standpoint, there are many positives uh, to consider when you think about Sprint and their potential moving forward with 5G. Uh, they are showing signs of life. It looks like there are some moves that are putting them in the right direction in terms of their spectrum holding uh, or spectrum holdings, high level assets, their network improvements. I guess a possibility of still having a merger is still there. While that's probably unlikely in the near future, uh, we do know that it still looms. Business decisions can be made and things can change pretty quickly. Uh, but as of right now, we know that Sprint does have some issues. They are cutting some jobs. I know of uh, a location, Overland Park, Kansas, where 500 jobs were eliminated. Uh, if not, you know, if they haven't happened already, they will soon. Uh, the company says that the business end is growing. This kind of counteracts that. I'm not sure if this is cost, strictly cost savings or they don't need it. I'm not really sure. So that kind of contradicts that. Uh, also, you know, Sprint wants to become the, the 5G company. They've been quoted as saying that they do have the expansive spectrum portfolio many valuable holdings and assets. Uh, you know, the 2.5 gigahertz holdings are probably their most valuable asset. They consider that their ace in the hole. Uh, but the problem is, is they're still lacking in 4G LTE availability. Um, a lot of coverage issues, capacity issues, and speed issues. Uh, they have had some obstacles. They've gotten fined for their anti-Verizon ads. They've gotten fined for putting up small cells in locations uh, where cities didn't approve. So they are kind of overcoming these small hurdles, but we're still going to stay positive towards Sprint. We want to see them improve from a market standpoint, make sure that they are viable to keep, you know, the competition within the carriers, uh, keep them on their toes. So, uh, and also the one last thing I want to add is this is kind of strange. I didn't really understand this when I first read it, but after analyzing it, it makes some sense. Uh, they are testing Sprint is actually uh, testing a lot of unlimited data pricing in several different markets. So I'm going to go ahead and run through a lot of these. Many of them are providing free Hulu subscriptions, you know, six month uh, trials to Tidal Music, global roaming options, 15 gigabyte hotspot data. You know, you can choose standard definition or high def uh, ultra high definition and limited plans. So I'll just run through some of them. The first one is if you're in Atlanta or Phoenix, if you are to utilize auto pay, you can get four lines of unlimited plan data at $35 per line for one year. After that year, the first line becomes $65, the second $45, and then the third and fourth $25 each. Um, this would be available in Atlanta and Phoenix. In Minneapolis and Charlotte, uh, they're doing the 50% Verizon bill. Uh, so whatever your Verizon bill is, they're cutting it in half, and they're offering that to you. They're calling this the unlimited service, $25 per line for uh, for up to a year then it switches again same as previous uh the previous deal which is um it'll switch to the first line being 55 second being 35 and then the third and fourth lines at 15. in new orleans and st louis they've got uh one month of free service if you port your line and bring your phone over and switch and then uh that would be 35 dollars per line for one year uh the first line being 65 after that year, and then the second line being 45, the third and fourth lines being 25 per month. You know, these are completely regional. They are uh, completely restricted to certain cities. I'm a little confused. I'm not really sure about the plan or the direction that they're going with this. I know they're trying to attract users to kind of join. So, of course, obviously, they want to generate some revenue. So where are the profits in this? I'm not really sure. I know that a lot of the carriers are starting to eliminate a lot of those old promotions. You know, they're not really offering them as they used to. So in terms of market analysis, in terms of leadership and the planning, I would say, you know, from a sprint perspective, like where is the reflection on 2017? Do we need to continue to test these plans and regions? I'm not really sure of the direction. In 2017, Sprint only had 0.4 million ads. That's not even a half a million ads. So if they want to become the 5G company, if they want to become you know, this, this growing company, I, I'm not really sure about the direction in which they're going. I think we'll get some clarity you know, by the middle of this year as to what exactly they're, do, they're doing. So that's kind of what's going on with Sprint. I'm going to shift over to T-Mobile. Um, for those of you that have been following the RCS Universal Profile, 
Uh, I guess the acceptance of this profile has been behind a little bit. Uh, from the last I checked, T-Mobile is going to be the big pusher for this messaging protocol. Uh, we are expecting it in quarter two of this year, 2018. So in the next few months, we should get a lot of news on this. Um, it makes sense that T-Mobile is pushing this. They're kind of leading the messaging revolution, as they say. You know, Google's always had this issue. Uh, no dedicated universal standard for messaging. So model to model, manufacturer to manufacturer, OEM to OEM. There's all these different variations in how messaging is getting done. Uh, starting in 2015, uh, many T-Mobile users have been using this protocol, but they just probably didn't realize it. Uh, it's been available via carrier services from T-Mobile customer to T-Mobile customer. Uh, Sprint has also universally adopted this protocol. I think they did in 2016. Uh, so the mission of the RCS Universal Profile is you can have advanced features that are not possible with standard messaging, so SMS. Uh, you can get things like high quality image sharing, longer messages, typing indicators, you know, message read receipts, uh, file sizes that are greater than 100 megabits in size. You know, we haven't heard anything from Verizon or AT&T from this, but I mean, imagine now that you've got T-Mobile and Sprint on this protocol, we just need the other two carriers to get involved. Then you can have so much more potential with texting. And we all know that texting has become king. It's not really about calling as much as it used to be. Uh, so let me know what you guys' thoughts and opinions are on this RCS Universal Profile being adopted completely and 100% by T-Mobile and Sprint. You know, I'm, I'm really hoping that Verizon, AT&T finally jump on this. I'm not sure exactly what type of investment it's going to take, but it should be enabled all across the board. It is kind of annoying when you download uh, an image that somebody sends you or a video and the quality is poor because it had poor compression and, you know, those types of things. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And the last thing I want to leave you guys with right here on the screen, Open Signal Report, number one in LTE speeds, T-Mobile and Verizon. Uh, T-Mobile being number one and Verizon a close number two. This is according to Open Signal. And in terms of LTE availability, T-Mobile and Verizon very close neck and neck with uh, Verizon edging them out slightly. Uh, great improvements from Sprint, but they are still fourth in this case. Uh, but it is good to see that they are improving. Uh, I'm not really in, you know, my intention is not to get into any type of like arguing or debates. What I want to know is based on your needs, what are your LTE priorities? You know, you got to consider speeds, availability, connectivity, latency, consistency. Considering all those things, what are your number one or number two priorities? Kind of give me an order. Let me know what you guys consider when you, you know, when you sign up for a line from a company. You know, what are you looking for? So for me, you know, honestly, it's all about availability for me. I don't like seeing my phone in 3G service. So it's really just number one has got to be availability of, of LTE. And number two is actually switch for me what used to be speed i've kind of shifted my focus to connectivity and latency and consistency so speed for me has become almost not really an issue as long as it's not slow and it is usable i'm okay with that so you know prioritize it for me guys in the comment section below let me know what you guys think is most important to you which carrier do you think does that for you do you currently have them or are you considering a switch because of it that's it for this one guys covered a lot of stuff Happy Sunday to all of you. I hope you had fun on St. Patrick's Day. You ate a lot of corned beef and you had a good time. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.